Today I'm going to show you guys how to make a record graphic shown in this video. Uh, this is one of my own art projects that I designed and made from scratch and it is completely Photoshop generated. There are no outside images or textures that you will need to import for this tutorial. I did include a link in the description to my finished PSD file if you want to get a closer look at my layers. Let's get started. First, I have Photoshop open, and I'm going to create a new document that is 12 inches by 12 inches. I'm going to leave all the standard settings and just name this Pendant Record. Once I have my canvas, uh, first I will need a black circle that covers all the available space on my canvas as the base for my record. To do this, I'm going to create a new layer and have black as my foreground color. and then go to the line tool and under it is the ellipse tool that I will need. Uh, make sure that you check the tool setting is set to pixels instead of shape for this tutorial. Then starting in the corner um, and just a bit off of the corner, not like actually in the corner corner, um, I'm going to click and drag while holding down the shift key so that the ellipse remains a perfect circle. You don't want the edges of your circle to touch the edges of your canvas so make it a bit smaller than your canvas. Now I have the base of my record. If you want to make your record a different color, um, you could use another color other than black, but I'm going for the classic look of a black record with a red label. Now we need to add the lines of the record texture. If you are just a beginner in Photoshop, this next part might seem a bit complex, um, but fear not, I'm going to do my best to, to walk you through the steps. So create a new layer, um, and it's always a best practice to name your layers. So this one will be my record texture layer. Now I'm going to hit X to switch my colors, so I'm working with white. And then with my new layer selected, I'm going to control click the thumbnail of my record base. This will create a marching ant selection of my base layer. And then if I go under the gradient tool to grab the paint bucket tool, I can click inside the marching ants to fill it with white. Then do Control D to deselect. If you look at your layers now, you'll have a black circle on your base layer and a white circle on your texture layer. Now with the texture layer selected, um, we're going to add um, our first step in the texture. So go up under Filter, Noise, and Add Noise. Make sure that you have black and white as your foreground and background colors before doing this step, otherwise your texture will not turn out right. I'm going to change this to be a Gaussian monochromatic noise effect, and I'm going to set the percent to 150. Then you can click OK. Now we have um, this noise and speckled texture, but we need it to go in a circle. So I'm going to go under Filter, Blur, Radial Blur. So set the amount to 40 is what I'm going to go with. Um, and make sure you're using Spin for the Blur and Best for the Quality because we want this to be high quality. This effect might take a bit to apply when you hit the OK button. Uh, so once it is applied, you'll now have something that looks like this. We have basically a hint of our lines pattern, but we need it to be darker. So we're going to go under Image, Adjustments, and Levels. Um, so you can play around with your level settings to get the amount that you want, but I'm going to go ahead and set my black at 153, the gray at 1, and the white at 181. Then for an added effect, once the levels are applied, I think this needs a bit more contrast. So I'm going to go under Image, Adjustments, Brightness, and Contrast. And I'm just going to max the contrast all the way out. What level of contrast you use is totally up to you. Now that we have our texture, um, I want to make it look good with our base. So I'm going to lower the opacity of this layer. Ignore the center of the record when you're doing this, since we'll be covering that with the label. You just want to look towards the outside of the record to gauge what your opacity 
looks like um, best for your texture. So you want it to look like an actual like record grooves, but you don't want it to look too sharp, but you also don't want it to be too faint. So I think right about 30% uh, looks for good for me, but you can always go back and change it later. So now it's time to start the label base. I want to use the classic red for my label, but you're welcome to use whatever color you want. So I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna name it label. And using the ellipse tool, um, and I'm gonna go get the, that perfect red, I'm going to draw a circle from the inside of my record um, and I'm going to hold shift again to draw that perfect circle. And I'm going to make my label circle about 3.8 inches. You know, Photoshop always gives you those measurements whenever you're dragging to create a new shape. So now I just want to do a quick alignment to make sure that we have our new label lined up perfectly with the center of our record. So with um, our label layer selected, I'm going to shift click our texture layer so that they're both highlighted. And using the quick toolbar up top here, I'm going to click align horizontal center and align vertical center buttons. So you'll see our label kind of shifts um, to move to the center of our record, which is what we want. All right, so now let's add the very center of our record. So I'm going to create another layer, and I'm just going to name this one Center. And then I'm going to get black as my foreground color. And using the ellipse tool, I'm going to draw a tiny circle with the black. Once again, holding Shift to constrain the proportions. Uh, then I select our label layer, and I'm going to just do another uh, quick alignment here. So you, you hold Shift and then vertical and horizontal align. So now it's in the center. So now we need to add some gradients to get our record um, looking more realistic. So let's get the gradient tool, which is located under our paint bucket tool. And I'm going to go up to the tool settings for this, and I'm going to select the angle style. Um, so then we're going to need to create a custom gradient for this part. So I'm going to click in the gradient box to open the gradient editor. You will see we have a gradient in there that's generated by our foreground and background colors, which are black and white. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add more stops to this gradient by clicking along the bottom of the gradient. Now to try to get these more spaced out, I try to click at the midpoint of each one, and we're going to add seven more stops. So now that I've added seven more stops, I'm going to change them to be alternating black and white. Um, so this first one here is black, um, second one I'm going to change to be white, next one I'm going to leave black, change the next one to be white, and so on and so forth. So now that I've finished my custom gradient, I can click OK. And starting at the center of my record and dragging out to one of the corners, um, doesn't really matter, you can drag either to a corner or up to the top, just remember which direction you drag because that'll, that'll come into play later. So this will create my angled gradient. Um, looks pretty cool. Um, so we're going to change the blend mode of this layer to overlay. And then I'm going to drop the opacity to 80%. Now, I don't think this effect right now by itself is strong enough, so I'm going to duplicate the layer using Control J so that I can strengthen this effect. So this is kind of what it looks like now. It looks pretty cool. Um, so I'm going to play around a bit with this uh, opacity of the second layer because um, I don't want it to be too harsh of a lighting effect. So I think 50% uh, looks, looks pretty good. So this is where you might decide that you need to change the opacity of your texture layer. So I think um, mine is just a bit too harsh right now, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to drop it down to around 25%, I'd say, um, that that looks pretty good. So now we have our gradient. So that's, that's it for the outside of this.
So that's, that'll be how it looks in our final project. But now we're going to shift gears to work on the center of our record because as you can see, it's just a plain red circle and it looks like it. So we're going to add a gradient to the center of our project. So above the label layer, I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this center gradient. Then using uh, our new custom angle gradient that we have, I'm going to repeat what we did for the record base. So if you dragged it up to the right hand corner, drag it up to the right hand corner again. If you dragged it up to the top, drag it up to the top again. You get the picture. So now uh, I have my new gradient and I'm going to change the blend mode on this layer to darken. I'm going to shift the opacity all the way down to 15% because we don't want it to be harsh gradient. And even then, I think it's still a little bit too powerful, so I'm going to adjust the fill of this gradient down to mm, down somewhere around 50. This 48% looks pretty good. And so basically, this is just going to give a, a gentle shadow to the red so that it's not just flat. Now, we don't want this part affecting our base since we already perfected that. So with your center gradient layer selected, um, we're going to control click the label thumbnail so we can get that marching ant selection around our label. And then we're going to go up to select inverse. And that will select the excess gradient that we want to delete. And then just click backspace to delete the unwanted gradient. Um, and then control D to deselect. So now we've removed um, that part of the gradient that we didn't want. Now the last layer we're going to need is going to be our label art. So to make this, um, I'm going to zoom into the label here and I'm going to create a new layer above it and temporarily turn off the visibility on our center gradient layer that we were just working on. So using black as my foreground color, um, I'm going to use the ellipse tool here to create a black circle that's about three inches in diameter. And then I'm just going to quick align this new circle to my label. So that's once again the shift click and then going up to the toolbar and vertical center align and horizontal center align. So now um, I need to cut out a center of my label art because um, we want to be able to see the red and then the hole that we created. So I'm going to create another layer up above here. You don't have to name this one because we're going to delete it in a little bit. And I'm going to hit X to switch to using white as my foreground color. And I'm going to draw an ellipse about one inch in diameter. That, that looks pretty good to me. And then I'm going to quick align this to my label art layer. Um, now that I have my layer art label selected, I'm going to control click my new white circle layer so that I can get that selection and then backspace and then deselect. So now you'll see I punched uh, a hole through my black label art layer using the that white layer as kind of like a hole punch. Um, so now once you have that you can delete the white circle layer. So now you can add your text if this um, looks like a good label to you, but I like to add some more flair to my label. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another layer here and I'm going to get the rectangle tool and I'm going to just draw some white rectangles here to punch out of my label using that same process of control clicking. So now I've got some extra lines in my label art and you can make your label look however you want. Um, but I'm going to now add some text. So I'm making this record look like it was from a fictitious record company um, named Pendant. But you know, you could go with the classic Columbia or Atlantic Records or you can make your own brand. So uh, to get my text, I'm going to create a new layer and get my text tool. And I'm just going to type Pendant. Now, um, I have this really cool font that I found named Ethnocentric that I got from dafont.com. Um, so you can use a font you already have, you know, just kind of browse your library. Or um, if you're looking for something really 
perfect to a certain style, I highly recommend searching free font sites like defont.com um, so that you can download and install like the perfect font for your project, in case you didn't know about that. So um, I add that. And then I just want to also um, add in the title of my record and the artist. Um, so I'm just going to quickly throw that in there. And then I usually just add like a record number and a copyright to make it look more like a, a record label. I just kind of looked at some of the records I own just to see kind of what information they put on there. If you want to put like a track list, anything like that, put that on there. And then I'm just going to um, click my topmost layer and then shift click to my bottom layer and I'm just going to throw all of these layers into a group and name it label art. So now if you wanted to make multiple records or um, you decide you want to change some of the text that you have, you can just easily go into this group and edit whatever piece you need. So now I'm going to zoom back out and turn my center gradient back on. Um, and we're almost finished. I'd just like to add some stylization to my record by adding layer effects to the base and the label layers. So to do this, um, if you've never used um, layer effects before, just double click on your layer base, um, not on the text, and that will bring up the, this layer styles box. And I want to add a, a, bez a bevel effect on here. So I'm going to um, check the box for bevel and emboss, and then I'm going to click on it to pull up the settings. And I'm going to choose the style inner bevel, and I'm going to change this technique instead of smooth. I'm going to change this to chisel hard. Um, I'm going to edit my depth here to be 160% size at 32 pixels. I'm going to change these bottom opacities to be 55% and 100%. Um, so you can see in the preview that the, the kind of edge that this gives this record and you can experiment with the values to get a look you like. Um, I already had these values predetermined because um, I knew what I was what I was going for. So then you can OK on that and you can see what we've got. So now I want to give this same kind of look to my red label. So on our label layer, I'm going to double click to bring up the layer, st the layer styles box and I'm going to select inner shadow this time. Um, and I'm going to change these settings to the opacity of 53%, an angle of negative, negative 56 degrees, a distance of 42 pixels, 100% choke, and a size of 10 pixels. So again, you can play around with these values and see for yourself in the preview um, how it will, will look to get the look that you want. So uh, if we look at all of our layers here, now we can see that we've made uh, quite the high resolution masterpiece. And I'm going to turn off this white background layer down here so that I can save this out as a PNG. So in that video that I first opened where um, it's animated to spin and zoom, I did that just using some simple keyframes in After Effects. Um, so that was the reason why I made this so high resolution is so you can uh, zoom in on it and it will still look good. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.